Uh, okay, last time we were talking about passwords, so we looked at uh, various issues. Uh, in particular, we spent uh, quite a bit of time looking at the different, uh, uh, those different cases, right? So, you know, if you have a password file, uh, you know, and all that stuff. And we talked about salting passwords, right? What, what is a salt? It's some random bits, okay, and why do we, and when we store passwords in a file, we hash the password, so why do we hash them with a salt? What's the purpose of that? It, it gives more work, it gives more work to people trying to crack passwords. That's right, okay, it creates more work, and why? Why is that? The same password is not hashed. That's right. So you can't just pre-compute your dictionary of hashes. You have to essentially attack each password individually. Okay. So it's a really simple thing, and it's, you know it's essentially a free lunch for the uh, good guys. You add a little bit of extra random bits in there, it makes the work much greater for Trudy. But then we went through those cases, right? And in particular, the last case kind of shows that you know if you have sort of a reasonable sized dictionary with a reasonable chance of success, and you have a you know, a dick password file which has a few passwords in it, you're out of luck. You know, really, even with salting, it creates more work, but it's just not enough. Okay, Trudy's still got, you know, a tremendous advantage here. Okay. Okay, there are other issues that come up when we talk about passwords. You know, every website you go to wants you to enter a password, right? So you get a bazillion different websites, and what do you do? How do you take care of that? I don't know about you, but I use the same password. Okay, so you end up using the same password in lots of different places, or very similar password, or whatever. What's the problem? With that? Yeah, I mean, if one of them's not doing the right thing and not taking care of your passwords and it gets compromised, then all your passwords are compromised, or at least somebody has a good head start. So that's an issue. Uh, another thing to think about is if you choose a bad password, okay, who, who suffers? So suppose at work you choose a weak password, somebody gets access to your corporate network and you know deletes all the important files and stuff like that. So who suffers in that case? You do because you get fired, okay? Or your company, the entire company suffers. So they probably are very careful about how they let you choose your password. You know, they make sure that it fits all the requirements that they specify. They probably run some password cracking tools in the background and check to see if it fits on some dictionaries or whatever. So they're careful. On the other hand, how about your ATM PIN number? And that's acting like your password, right? So when you go to the bank and you choose your PIN number, do they check to make sure it's not your birthday, or it's not all zeros, or it's not one, two, three, four? They don't care. Why don't they care? It's your money, it's your money right? They don't stand to lose here, right? I mean, if, unless you have a really good lawyer or something like that, they don't have a problem here, right? So. so so there's different levels, you know, I guess, of how they would treat passwords just based on the potential problems with them. Okay, if you go to any, like, uh, the websites that, like, system administrators follow for security uh, issues, and they talk about attacks on there, you know, you see a lot of cases where the attacks result from default passwords. So somebody installed some particular product, it came with a default password, password, and nobody bothered to change it. Well, the attackers know what the default passwords are too, and so they break in. So that happens all the time. Uh, social engineering, what do we mean by that? Calling people. Being persuasive <laughs> or sneaky. <laughs> okay, being persuasive or sneaky. I mean, did we talk about this example I mentioned um, maybe early in the class about this guy who does like penetration testing? He's a really popular speaker. He goes to like all these security conferences. <laughs> Every year he's got some new story, right? So his main thing, he gets hired by companies, he's supposed to go in and find weaknesses in their security. And his main thing is social engineering. So here's an example, here's one I remember. He went to this company somewhere in Arizona, right? Went to their corporate headquarters, and he uh, went up to their front desk, basically. And he said, you know, what do I need to do to get a badge? <laughs> they said, oh, well, why do you need a badge? He said, oh, I'm a new system administrator trainee. And they said, okay, well, fill out this paperwork and get your, get your boss to sign it. So he gets the paperwork back there, he fills it out, and he gets his friend who's with him to sign it so it looks different. You know, somebody takes it up to the secretary and gets a badge, and he goes in. So he's like, you know, five, you know, 10 minutes, he's in the place, right? 
and he's got this badge that says system administrator trainee. So he would go up to the secretaries and he would say, you know, there's some problem with your account here, you know, can you do this and then do this? And he's kind of leading them through all the stuff he wants them to do. And he said half the time they would just get sick of it and they would just turn the computer around and say, here, why don't you do it? You know, and so he's sitting there, full access on the computer. <laughs> and he said, he claimed that within three days, of this, he had essentially all the uh, intellectual property of the company on the DVD, and he took it to the, you know, president of the company and said, "Here, you know, here's your security. <laughs> right, you got some problems." In. So that stuff's really effective, right? And that's a, a, a little bit beyond um, sort of the, uh, uh, you know, the, what we're going to cover in this class. But you should definitely be aware. You know, the human element is really the weakness in a lot of uh, real world. Situations, yeah. A more everyday example would be trying to break into a program by flaming your resident there that you lost your key. <laughs> yeah, that probably works too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Call up, call up saying you're a person who's in charge of maintenance of a piece of software the company the, the company owns, and <clears throat> would you please tell them your passwords so you can get access? Passwords, yeah, you have I mean, access to it for maintenance. Yeah, I mean, think about this. I mean, in particular, find somebody who's busy, like a secretary, not probably particularly security conscious, and call them up, you know, and just be persuasive, you know, to, to really have some important reason to get access to this particular thing. And can they just give you your password? Probably you'll get it a good percentage of the time. Okay. Uh, another password issue, and this used to actually happen a lot, you know, if you have logs, error logs. Right, so they keep track of error conditions. If you enter your password and it's incorrect, that's an error. So it goes in the log file. And what's wrong with that? Well, if it puts the password, the incorrect password in there, it's probably almost certainly just a few letters off from the correct password, and so that's a pretty good hint to anybody who sees it. Uh, today, what you see a lot are keystroke logging devices, right? So some of these are, you know what this is, right? So it's some malware that gets on your system and it keeps track of what you're typing. And some of these are really sophisticated. They will look and only keep track of stuff that's, you know, happening in a window that could possibly be a password or something somebody would care about. It's not just you typing a letter. Okay, and then at some point we'll wrap up all this information and send it off to somebody who, you know, can think of some devious use for it. Okay. Okay, anyway, back to the password cracking thing. You know, the bottom line there is, you know, the, the math just all favors Trudy. It's just such an enormous advantage for Trudy. Even if you do everything right, you salt the passwords and all that. There's just a, and you have a lot of passwords to protect, you're in trouble, particularly in the case of just a single bad password is enough, you know, for Trudy to get access and start causing problems, which is usually the case. Uh, so the math there, you know, the numbers are not so important by themselves, but just the <coughs> idea that, you know, the advantage lies with Trudy. Um, so passwords are a big problem, it's certainly going to remain so, yeah. I would point, even if you do it right, try to have a good password or, yeah, no. or a passphrase for each of your 50 different accounts, you can never remember 50 of those. So you're reduced <laughs> to having to have a list somewhere. Yeah, that's okay. right. Well, you know, there are some things that can help you out. Like uh, sometimes you have a like a password uh, keychain. That's what they call it on the Mac, right? So all your passwords are stored there. And how are those protected? By a password. By a password. <laughs> so you got a password again. But it kind of helps you if you have a lot of sites, right? So all those sites can have different passwords. Still, if somebody gets access to your machine, they can get all those passwords. So you know, there's some trade off there. Okay. There's a lot of password cracking mm -hmm. tools out there. You know, you could get these and play around with them. I don't recommend you use them against other people on your domain. You know, that would be a very bad thing to do. But certainly system administrators should be using these to check passwords because those are the same tools the attackers will use. You know, so it just makes sense to see if you can break your own passwords before somebody else does. Um, here's a couple of interesting articles on passwords. Uh, I like this one because uh, we mentioned when uh, this password experiment we talked about last time where you just tell people to choose their password, you don't give them too much guidance, and typically you can break about a third of those passwords, and that number's in here. It's like 30%. They take a bunch of passwords, they try to crack them, and they get like 30%. This one's kind of interesting. Uh, I can't remember all the details off the top of my head, but I think they were, these people were at some conference, 
Okay, and I think it was even a security conference, so people should be, you know, somewhat security conscious. And they set up a booth, and as people walked by, they would ask them for their password. And it was like 50% of the people would give them their password with no further prompting. And the people who wouldn't give them their password, they asked them, you know, if we bribe you and give you a candy bar, will you give us your password? And then it shot up to like 80%. <laughs> so basically, it's not too hard to get somebody's password. Now, I don't know how they checked that it was correct and all that sort of stuff. But 